Hey, welcome to a quick review of this kind of generic Chinese brand Bluetooth controller. I bought this for about five pounds and I bought it to play like emulators on my phone. Let's just jump straight into it. So the controller's made uh, fully of plastic and in terms of size, uh, I've just got a typical sort of smartphone here, a Xiaomi Mi 5. It's a little bit thicker than a phone, but yeah, I'd say maybe like half the size of a phone. On here, you've got an analog stick as opposed to a D-pad and you've got four buttons on the right and four buttons in the middle. There's no kind of bumper buttons or anything like that. On the back, we've got a battery compartment, which I'll open up, and you can see it's powered by two AAA batteries. So it's not rechargeable, but you know it's kind of a good thing you can switch out the batteries and change it. Okay, so the, the controller is Bluetooth, and you power it up by holding the start slash on button. And if I keep holding this, I'll get into pairing mode eventually. Okay, and you can see it available. It's called MoCute something or another, and then we can pair with it, and cool. We're working. So over here, there's a little toggle switch and it's either on game or key. So when it's on key, uh, this is functioning as a volume up, volume down, kind of like uh, you get on a headphone. So we have to turn that onto the game setting. And then if I focus back on my screen over here, you can start playing. So in terms of your buttons, you might have to change on your emulator. But for example, I've got X and Y set as L1 and R1, and then you've got A and B. Another thing I should mention is even when it's in game mode, this M button here toggles it as being a controller or being kind of a mouse. So uh, I've, I've pressed it there, the light's gone green, and now you can see on my screen, actually, there's a little mouse, which I'm controlling with the analog stick, whereas with it pressed again, I'll go back to it being a controller. You can see I'm kind of scrolling up and down there. Let's pass this over to analysis to see how this thing is to use. So as you saw by my playing, it is a little bit clumsy to use with that analog stick. And generally any games where you need kind of good control of that, like platformers, I think you're gonna not enjoy using this controller basically. A D-pad is much better. As for the other buttons, I'd say they're all right, like compared to like an original Game Boy or DS, they've got a decent little feel to them, but they're not amazing. As I said before, you're missing those bumper buttons. So you're not able to emulate on all kinds of consoles, only kind of the basic ones, but I'd say it's not too bad in general. And since it's Bluetooth, it's quite compatible with uh, you know, a lot of different devices, and you've got those different modes I talked about, so it's quite a little versatile tool. So firstly, the positives, this is super cheap. It costs five pounds, other stuff will cost 10, 15, 20, you could 10, 40 pounds. So it's, it's super cheap, but as a consequence, a direct con of that is it's not amazing. I'm not a fan of the analog stick. I think a D-pad would be better. The buttons as well, they're not great. They're not bad, they're somewhere in the middle. The other thing I'd say is it's nice that it's Bluetooth. Uh, that means it's compatible with a lot of different devices. And also the fact that it's battery powered rather than being rechargeable means that, you know, it's just a bit easier, isn't it? You can just pop out the batteries, put new ones in, as opposed to having to charge it and having the battery degrade. I think that's everything I wanted to cover. If you have any comments uh, or questions, please uh, put them down below. Um, otherwise, have a nice day.